with this video, we will be doing a life and death of Chilino Sanchez. And if you want to help this channel and the content that we make, and please help support our merchandise, the link in the description. And if you didn't hit that like button, make sure you hit the like button. Trying to get the channel to grow. The only way we're gonna do that if you like, share, and comment on the content. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's go. Chi Chi, get the Yayo. Get the Yayo. Fair use. May 16th, 1992. Chilino Sanchez has just been handed a death threat by an audience member. God dang, in the middle of the show? Chilino was murdered that evening. Dang! <laughs> Crazy. In the late 80s, the USA saw the rise of the gangster rap. What you would have did after I had a hand you note? Be like, ah, time to go. Y'all have been like, you know what? <laughs> Give me about five minutes, I'll be right back. I'd <laughs> 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 have been backing into the mansion. Yeah. I'm telling you. Time to go. Time to go. <laughs> Somebody wanted to do a crime, they had that mentality there. Anyway. I remember this. Yeah, they TV. <laughs> yeah, I was like Fire. 10. In some cases, modern music has turned very violent. That glorified violence. That's the way he rolled over Snoop's job with the, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't care wow. how they buying the CDs. Mexico had Narco Corrido. Narco Corrido translates to drug ballad. I never knew that. That's crazy. I never knew that's what that meant. Mm -hmm. I didn't know until I was living in Texas. You know how many times I put that on hashtags and songs? Uh, Mexican songs, I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> but I know that's where it went. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> That's why he had to quickly say, yeah. not that one. Because you know what everybody was thinking. Because everybody would be like, what? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he saw the man at the party at the rancho. Caught him lacking. He caught him lacking. That's crazy. Tijuana, man. Yeah, it's how you hear about Tijuana, it ain't. It's real. Dope. Yeah. It's real. Fly guy. The hotel center retail in the city of Tijuana. They shot you without giving you time for There's so many bodies where people live about Chilino providing the voice of the real stories of Mexico. Mm, straight from the trap. It is said that around this period he found himself in a mesa, a prison in Tijuana. While in jail, he reportedly wrote songs about his fellow inmates and trade for money. 
upon his release, he found himself writing songs on commission for low-level traffickers and local tough guys. Shalino would trade songs for gold chains and watches and pistols or gimmick grips. Mm. Mm. Like he was getting that bag. In 84, Shalino married Martinino and Vallejos. Their son, Aiden, was already in the way. Wow. So he got married before the baby came. Llegó el recomendado por, en aquel tiempo, por un grupo norteño que existen todavía, se llama Llamados, los cuatro de la frontera. Well, this is your time free. Espero no causar daños Aquí comienza el corrido Del buen Renato Aventaño Two crew from the radio with Chileno Hustle his tapes at the car wash At street corners and swap meets in LA His music sold like wildfire And even appealed to American eyes And Spanish Chileno inspired a new generation To get in touch with their Mexican ancestry So he's like one of the ones that's like He set roots in the game He just like Came out here was selling like mixtapes out of the trunk and was getting it that way. Yeah, like Master P style. Out the yeah, trunk. I know that. The story get better and better as we go into it. That's dope. Entrepreneur, like not letting you on the radio. I got some music and if the streets gonna buy it, I'm just gonna sell it in the streets. So let's make it happen. Facts. It's tough. Four years after his first recording, he gave his first performance at El Perro nightclub in Southgate, California. Mm. That's back in the day. That's Early a lot of 90s. money. That's yeah. a lot of money back then. You was really caking up. He was getting it. For sure. Un tal Eduardo Gallegos de 33 años salió dentro del público. Sabrá Dios que se habrá metido, si andaba borracho o andaba drogado. 
Y ya le habla a Chalino con la pistola en la mano. Chalino, cuando le ve la pistola, arranca su pistola también, porque Chalino lo hicimos crear su pistola. Entonces, él, él le tira, le tira al amigo. Chalino le, 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 le tira al amigo. Yeah, he's gangster. Pero también él era una persona, como te digo, muy segura de sí mismo. Y él dijo, ¿sabes qué? Si mi padre Dios ya lo decidió, va a pasar. Hoy, o mañana o pasado, él salía, él vivía pendiente de que lo iban a matar un día. Sí, el 10 de mayo se presentó aquí en el Barallón y este, se despidió de mí, de un abrazo. Me había comentado él sus uh, problemas que tenía y peligros y él iba a Sinaloa. Yo personalmente le recomendé, compa Chelino, no vaya a Sinaloa. Back then, it's hard to turn that 20 grand down back in 92. 92, 20 grand. That's almost like 200 grand a day. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. Facts. Cuando Chalino terminó de cantar, nos fuimos a seguirla a casa de Chamaco. Nos llevamos una chamaca y ahí nos quedamos con Chalino hasta la noche. lado hay esa interpretación de que puede ser la gente para bien, por el otro lado hay que las mujeres, eh, y por el otro hay otra versión de que posiblemente se metió con una mujer casada. lo que había pasado este, pero qué se le puede hacer no son cosas de la vida quién sabe mañana a lo mejor nos colgamos TV. Let's get it.
This is Lamar Wilson representing Ghetto Action News Network underscore all lower cases. No spaces. And you can find us on Facebook. Just hit the like button. Let me get right into this. This was crazy. This was tough. Crazy. Crazy. Wow. Like uh, it was a ride. I learned a lot about music, environment, people, and where to be and where not to be. When people say certain things, you need to listen, depending on where you at. That's what I seen. This was tough. It's crazy how it ended with his son, too, though. That was wild. Like, yeah. All them years later, he finally was making his movie. Yeah. Broke some things people never did. Broke yeah. some doors down and yeah. sadly went out the same way. How you feel about this? I think it was uh, crazy. I like how they uh, put this together um, and told the story without taking up a lot of time. Just basically broke it down in 13 minutes. Um, how he got started. How he started from the bottom, from the mud. Uh, worked his way from uh, being a coyote uh, to doing music and selling his own CDs out the trunk to get some money. And went from that to getting 20000 a show. Um, to life being taken, I thought it was crazy. Um, the story is crazy, and I know behind that story, he's definitely a legend. Uh, where he from? Cause legendary story that just was told to us right there. Um, and it's just crazy to see that in both genres, the same thing is basically going on. Just people out the mud, just trying to make it out the mud by any way. And I think it's just crazy um, how they would put that to us and we all going through the same struggles um, and look like. And I thought it was a great episode and I can't wait until our next episode. But until then, it's your boy Trey TV and I'm out.